we want to talk about busts and stuff like this this is funny this shows the like the the kind of the um the back and forth that we had with with chief's kingdom especially on twitter it's it's interesting it's an interesting play sometimes but uh, earlier this week uh report that clyde edwards hilaire was going to start the season on the pup and of course as i just mentioned the internet went nuts the chief's kingdom on twitter went absolutely berserk calling him a bust all types of things, all types of slander. It's just like, you know, you, you, know, you, know, you know how it gets sometimes. But uh, then today, this morning, after everyone thought, oh, he's going to be on PUP. And the report, um, Nate Taylor said it was only going to be a couple of days, which everyone was like, well, he's going to be on PUP for a couple of days. What, what is this? But then the following morning today or Wednesday morning, um, Clyde Edwards Slayer was uh, geared up and ready to go. There was no PUP. He was already already off this PUP list that he was supposedly on. Um, he was ready to go and practice today. He practiced and, and it, looked, it looked pretty good on some of the clips and some of the people who were there. He looked pretty good. Um, so the question here I have here is, this a make or break year for Clyde Edwards Hilaire? And what do you realistically expect out of him after an off season where he's been putting in a lot of work? You see all the videos that he's put up as training videos and you see all the work he's done with Patrick down in Texas. What, what do you expect out of him? And do you think this is a make or break season for, for Clyde? Uh, make or break. Uh, I think so. I mean, you, this is where you had to establish yourself. I mean, you already know you got Ronald Jones, you got Rojo behind you, you know, to Kent McKinnon. They keep talking about uh, Isaiah coming up. Uh, Machenko is another guy that they, they have a lot of faith in, you know, and so, uh, and, and then Gore, he got some little playing time uh, as well. So this is this is one of those things, man. Like, hey, you you got to put up or shut up. This this is it. This, and and we we got to understand. This is a it, it's a it's a performance business. It's what it is. It's a performance business. And so when when you have expectations on you, and you're not performing like they expect you to or what they want you to do, then uh, it. it it, it can change. It can change real quick where a guy can be. And so it was like, hey, yeah, I love a guy, but man, look, we would we might have to just move on from him. And so sometimes, especially running backs, where uh, I'm, I'm going to say maybe that position as far as running backs is not as, I want to say, as valuable as it was when I was playing. Yeah. But because you, you, you throw the ball a lot more now that you're looking for a guy that can do both, like, you know, catch the ball in the backfield, run the football, get it up, you know, in, in between the tackles. Uh, a guy like that really, I think he he it's more advantageous for him in the league like it is now. Ceh can show that he can show that about him. So we've seen the hard work, and I don't know if they've ever divulged like what the reason was why they was going to put him on pup. It might have just been like he was working so hard during the off season. They might have had like a little nick, you know what I mean? Mm. <clears throat> they just didn't want to start like, hey man, look, you know what? We understand you've been working hard. We know what you've been what you've been doing, like. We just want to make sure that you're fine. If we're going to put you on PvP for a little bit, then it's no big deal, right? And sometimes all that noise, it's just noise out here, man. I just you can't buy into it. You know, everybody's got an opinion about it. Everybody's not going to be happy. Oh, it's a bust, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Man, they say it. I mean, people are going to say that. Mm. You know, internet, man, you're going to hear everything. And Twitter, you're going to hear it all. So uh, the main thing with CEH is, man, he just needs to just go ahead and go out there and go to work. Okay, put all the naysayers to bed. Go out there and do what he needs to do. He knows he's been putting in work during the offseason, working with Pat, all those different things. As long as he's healthy to perform, that's all he needs to worry about. And then just go out there and just ball, just ball, you know? So you're going to have that. You're going to have the negativity. You're going to have all of that, man. Should we hear it on our show, right? We hear it, you know, with the YouTube channel and all. Hey, man, look, everybody going like, to like what we say. And it's all right. That's fine. I, I get it. Everybody has their own opinion about certain things. I'm, I'm arguing with that. I am. But also, too, um, you know, we got to understand that we can't be dismissive of certain things and how a guy really is and how he feels about what he needs to do and his opportunity is showing it. Mm. You know, oh, he's a bust. Well, what says that? You know, he got hurt last year. So, like we were saying before at the, the very first of the show, well, Baron, and nobody gets hurt, you should have a great team. Well, okay, yeah, no duh, right? And so, you know, it's unfortunate he got hurt. Nobody wants to get hurt. Yeah. But now if he if he's healthy uh, and he's able to go ahead and tote that rock, I'm, I'm looking for him to do it, man. I hope he does it. I hope he does it. And, and maybe that will help keep him here for years to come in Kansas City. Maybe they feel like, okay, now we got a guy that is dedicated, who can do what we needed him to do, 
Uh, and if he shows it this year, they're rewarded. But mm-hmm. and I, I, I hate using that bus tag on guys, man. It just is crazy. I, to me, I just, I, you know, you just you don't just throw things out there like that just because you don't you're not happy how you know if the guy was hurt. Mm. Oh, now he's a bus. Shoot. Well, okay. Well, yeah. I, I just I disagree with with that whole premises. So. Yeah, I mean, I think also too when this say bus, they're also looking at who was drafted after him, and it's like, well, and, and this what you kind of said. You you talk about you talk about running back in the modern age. It's like running backs in the first round don't really. Is, it, is that is that really is that a, is that a position you take in the first round anymore? If you if you look at the last few, you got Josh Jacobs, who they didn't even extend his contract, so this is the last year with the, with the Raiders. They, they they didn't they didn't give him that that last option. And then you look at the Clyde with Edwards Hilaire, it's like okay, well then you look after that Jonathan Taylor second round pick, DeAndre Swift second round pick, it's just guys who aren't taking in day one. Those are I guess I guess a lot of people don't think the running back should be day one guys anymore. So maybe that's what it is, but. Yeah, I, I I would say bust because I think I think we still we I think I, I agree with you. I think it's make or break. I think this is the year to kind of put up really, um, yeah. because otherwise, it's like okay, yeah, maybe maybe you, maybe you weren't the 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 you know the bell cow that we thought we were going to get, right? Maybe you aren't that. Maybe you have a role in the league as a third down back or you know a spell a spell type running back, but maybe you aren't the guy, I mean, and that's and that's but, fine. You have a role. Every running back has a, has a niche and a role. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, look, I, and, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to kind of be devil's advocate right here. Who's to say it if we didn't give him more opportunities, right? Yeah. Running the football. And, and we maybe we should run the, have a little bit more ground game. Yeah. Maybe we should, right? Maybe we give him a little bit more, see what he can do. And, you know, and, you know, yeah, he's a smaller guy. He, he, you know, and you, you can say all those things and different arguments. It's the same thing like, say, you know, uh, Saquon Barkley, right? Is he a bus? I'll tell you what, I'll take that sucker in a second. You know what I mean? So that's where I would be with it. But every, everybody has their different opinions about things. I, I, I'm one of those that I like running the football. And I think you, if you have a running back, you got to give a guy opportunity, right? Yeah. I thought like the same thing, Jeremy Kendrick should have got more opportunities, you know, in, in the playoffs. You know, what was we waiting for for the entire year? And so when you got these guys, use them, utilize these guys. Utilize them, right? And but I, I get it's a passing league now. That's where things are going to. But don't forget these guys back here, man. If you got it, if you got somebody talented to do it, shoot, make sure he give him a chance to make it and break it. Okay, give him a, ample opportunity to make it and break it. That's how I look at it. Yeah, and I think too one of the big things he was good at coming out of college. I think we're gonna. I I think with the way the offense is looking, the amount of kind of we're spreading it out a little more. I think one of the things he was good at, which we hadn't really utilized a lot, was his ability to catch out of the backfield. And I think with him working that with Alvin Mahomes in Texas, I think we kind of have something going in this year. I think we're going to utilize him more in the passing game. Hopefully, right, right. And right. With the addition of Rojo and what other running backs we have, you can yeah. kind of you know you can kind of spell him and make him more of the receiving back, and then have the other guys kind of be the more of the in between the tackle guys. Um, but we talked about this on the show. You talk about volume with him, and I think that's one thing that a lot of these running backs, people are quick to say, are busts. I think it's. You're not giving him enough touches, and the two he's only he's only had two games in his career where he's had 25 or more carries. And I know we have Patrick Mahomes, we pass it's a passing league now, but two games of 25 carries or more. Uh, his first game ever against the Houston on that Thursday night game, 25 for 138 and a touchdown. Um, and then against Buffalo that year, which we won that th- that Thursday that Tuesday night game, which got pushed back because of COVID. Oh yeah, yeah. 26 carries, 161 yards. So both games where he had 25 or more carries, he had over 135 yards rushing on those games, averaging five and a half and 6.2 yards per carry in both games. Only games in his career where he had uh, over 25 uh, uh, carries. Um, And last year, I don't think he cracked 20 in any of the games. No, he didn't crack 20 in any of the games last year. So, Right. uh, So 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 to me, I mean, you know, you can look at it two ways because it's like, okay, he's a smaller back. Do you want to keep giving him 25, you know, carries a game? Maybe not, but it, maybe it should still be around 20. It, it, you know what I'm saying? At least 20. It should be over that in some of the games, probably mm-hmm. half of them. It, it, it gave me a chance and opportunity. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I just – and if we do do that extension of getting the ball out to him in space, mm-hmm. there it is, right? Because it don't always have to be a handoff. It, it just, <laughs> you know, quick screen or whatever, you know, just, you know, swing route. Over the football, whatever. I mean, we could do all those checkdowns all day with this guy. Yeah. 
That, that was what Burrow, uh, they moved the chains a lot by throwing a little check downs to him in LSU. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that we, we talk about McKinnon kind of being the bell cow in the, the playoffs where we kind of used him a lot. Yeah. Hilarious stats were bad. He didn't play in the Steelers game, but Buffalo game, seven carries for 60 yards. And then the Cincinnati game, six carries, 36 yards. So he averaged 7.4 yards per carry in the playoffs on 13 touches. Yeah. Hey, I, mean, man. I mean, that's not, not, that's not enough carries, but we're talking about 8.6 yards a carry. We're talking about six yards a carry. That's pretty solid. <laughs> right. So that, that that so that brings the different on the on of saying this the argument of if you're not utilizing the guy does that necessarily mean he's a bust you're not utilizing because he can't carry the football mm-hmm. you're not utilizing because you're doing other things with it yeah so oh you know he's a bust they're not giving him no it's not that's uh, our offense is predicated on 15 throwing the football and get it out of his hand yeah. now if you want to utilize a little bit more of the running back ch let him have it. Give yeah. it to him. Yeah. Give it to him. You know, I don't. I don't think anybody would disagree that we need to start running the football even more. Yeah. Seriously, I just you know. So. And, and and a quick passing game. I mean, anyone who you know who knows the air raid offense and that kind of like spread style offense. Yeah, quick passing game to the running back is the the running game really. The running yeah. game. Damn. It's all right. That's it. It's, it's no different. <laughs> That's it. And, all in that and, ram in that area, the short short passing game, all in that ram is an extension of the handoff. That's, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. So the, the arrow, the the um, the, the, it's just a, any flat route really to the running back. I mean, that's just flat swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And that, that's something that I was excited to get him coming out of LSU because it was like that 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 year that they ran that spread offense and they, they checked out him so much. I'm like. You know, he would be a good, a solid guy to have in our offense, that kind of running back. If we are going to run the ball at Alton, let's utilize the guy who can catch ball in the backfield. And we really haven't done a good job of that, and I'm hoping that this year is a change. And I hope that that whole Texas workout thing with all these guys is going to open up something because that, that was one of the things. He was he was pat, he was was pat cashing at a, at the backfield from pat, Patrick in, in Texas and stuff. And I think they also – I think I saw some highlights of him or highlights, pictures of him actually lined up in the slot catching some balls too. So – I mean, help with some wrinkles this year with that with, with using him um, and using trying to use the best of him, you know. Yeah, no, I was, look, I seen some of his workouts, man. He looked good. He looked good moving. He his looked workouts good. did look pretty good. His start and stop looked really good. Yes. yes, yes, so yeah, use that guy. Yeah. Use it. I, yeah, I hope so. I hope uh, he can erase this bus tag for some of these uh, chief fans who were uh, mm-hmm. quick to label it, but we'll we'll, we'll see. O- only time will tell with a lot of those people, uh, right. and, then, and it's and then some may justify it. Well, he could be doing this better, um, but it's <laughs> we'll all right. We'll it's all right. Yeah, everybody, look, everybody got an opinion, man. It's all right. Hey, I let, I let you have yours. That's good. Hey. <laughs> Chiefs fans and everybody who, who's saying bust and all that, you can have your opinion. Good, fine. Hey, <laughs> Ceh, prove them all wrong. So yeah. I'm pushing, you know. So, um, and then also having having a, a packed running back room also help, kind of. You know, you you, you want to play better too, having like having all those guys at, at, at your butt. <laughs> you know, hey, you better. <laughs> you better. They breathe it down your neck, buddy. Believe me. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get podcasts.